On Common Framework Secretary of State, um, when you gave evidence to this committee <coughs> on the 8th of November last year, you told us in relation to agreeing common frameworks, and I quote here, very clear that it's not possible to achieve I, will, I am very clear that it will not be possible to achieve legislative consent and agreement from the Scottish Government unless we have agreed the process by which those frameworks will be agreed. And in further evidence, on the 3rd of May this year, you reaffirmed that we are not in the business of imposing frameworks. Why then, Secretary of State, did your Government proceed without the consent of this Parliament? And more importantly, perhaps now, will you now give a guarantee that no common frameworks will be imposed? I think, uh, as we've um, discussed previously at this committee and in uh, other discussions, th there is a degree of conflation of issues uh, uh, there. The EU Withdrawal Act, as it now is, was about uh, the, op the possibility of freezing existing EU uh, arrangements until uh, new agreements had been uh, reached. That, that is what a uh, clause... 12, as it now is, of that Act is about. It's not about the process for agreeing the frameworks. So my position on agreeing the frameworks is the same as I've previously stated. I want us to be in a position where we are able to reach agreement on those frameworks, those new arrangements that will apply once we leave the EU. I believe we're actually making very good progress uh, in doing that. There's a lot of work uh, underway uh, at the moment, some of which I've outlined uh, in my opening statement. And that's, you know, that's the big change I've, I've said before. It's the big change about leaving the EU. Matters which were previously agreed with the EU by the UK will now have to be agreed within uh, the UK. I drew these two matters together, Secretary of State, because it's pretty obvious, and everyone knows that in Clause 11 that you proceeded, the UK government proceeded to put in place without the consent of this Parliament. And now I'm seeking to ensure that you can give a guarantee today that there will be no common frameworks imposed in future, um, given that that's the history we're dealing with. I'm now trying to look forward to see how we're going to deal with these common frameworks, and I'm seeking a guarantee from you that no common frameworks will be imposed on Scotland. I don't, obviously, uh, to some extent, accept the premise of the question, because no common framework has been uh, imposed uh, on uh, Scotland. Uh, the provisions of the EU withdrawal bill, Clause 12, as it's, as it's become, Clause 11, as it was, uh, allow for existing arrangements to be frozen uh, whilst there is a negotiation of new uh, agreements. It is still absolutely my position, the UK government position, that we want to reach those frameworks by agreement. If no agreement is reached, will a common framework be imposed? We don't want uh, to be in a position where we don't uh, have uh, agreement. We want to be in a position where we, we reach you know, agreement. And that's uh, what we've sought to do throughout the, the process that actually uh, involved uh, the EU uh, with withdrawal bill. And I think, actually, if we focus on the issues, you know, the issues that are being covered, the very important issues to people in Scotland, like agriculture, like fisheries, and not the issues of process and, and whether or not uh, the constitutional arrangements within uh, the United Kingdom uh, need to be changed or whether or not we agree uh, what uh, the interpretation of those arrangements are, I'm confident we can uh, reach agreement because everybody has a common interest in, in doing so. I think, you know, if, if we've an issue I've, I've uh, raised before, the uh, movement of livestock within uh, Great Britain, I think uh, all Scottish Government, UK Government, uh, Welsh Assembly Government, you know, I, I, I don't see a basis on which uh, they wouldn't uh, be able to reach agreement. Well, like you, Secretary of State, I'm also interested in the content of the common framework, it's not the process, and it's the content I'm concentrating on, because that's, well, that's where there will either be agreement or not agreement, and I'm seeking for you to provide a guarantee that if, that if, the, none of these, if there's no agreement, that none of these common frameworks will be imposed. In the um, legislation, it, the, the process for agreeing the common, common frameworks was not part of that uh, was, was not part of the EU 
uh, withdrawal bill. So we are still going through um, an evolution of what uh, that process will be, but it will be a process about reaching agreement, agreement across the United Kingdom. Now, we may uh, differ, and uh, we have in relation uh, to uh, the, the role you know, of the Scottish Parliament in determining what happens in other uh, parts of the United Kingdom, because I'm quite clear that the Scottish Parliament doesn't have uh, a veto over what would happen uh, in other parts of uh, the United Kingdom. But I am determined that in relation to what happens in Scotland, in relation uh, to devolved matters, that that proceeds on the basis of agreement. OK, well, I've tried to secure that guarantee, but obviously I've not been able to, to get to the position I'd hoped to manage to get to the 